think we're doing this. Still got a few minutes before seven. So just uh, give us some time. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in so far. I just uh, started things a little early to make sure there weren't any technical issues. So we got, uh, looks like two and a half minutes before we kick things off. Oh, thanks, BFA Home. Got the wrong title going on. Worry so much about the, uh, Technical things like are the mics working and everything, you forget about the little, silly little stuff. Title should be fixed. It looks like it is 7 o'clock now, so that means it's going to be time for us to officially kick things off tonight. So thank you guys for joining us. Um, as per usual, this is Black Six, and today we've got the two newest uh, Star Wars buildable figures. So we've got uh, 75531, the Stormtrooper Commander. Um, normal kind of scale, this set will retail, or retails, because I believe it's available now, 
for uh, twenty-five dollars. Um, and then in a first for the Star Wars buildable figures, we've got a vehicle. So we've got seven five five three two Scout Trooper and Speeder Bike. So. Uh, you know, the Scout Trooper is kind of normal size, like you would expect, but we have this whole um, predominantly Technic, it looks like, speeder bike. So this set retails for $55 in the States. Um, so I guess with that out of the way, we can uh, get to some buildings. We're going to start off with the Stormtrooper Commander. Yes, and uh, if you want uh, for to uh, kind of have your own headcanon for these sets, this could be Kanan and Ezra from that uh, one episode in Rebels where they disguise as a stormtrooper and a scout trooper. So I guess uh, before I open that, I should have showed off the back of the box for the stormtrooper. Well, the front a little more. So he is a stormtrooper commander. You can tell that by his pauldron. This looks very similar to the piece used on the death trooper. Um, also is almost like the Sand Troopers from A New Hope, but I don't believe he has a backpack. Looking at the back, they actually show him without the pauldron, so if you want to have just a normal Stormtrooper, not a Stormtrooper Commander, pretty much you just have to remove that and you're good. And it looks like the gun is actually 2-in-1, so you can have the normal Blast Tech E11, or you can uh, have it, uh, uh, what is it, it's like the DL44, no, or is that Han Solo's? But there's a there's a name for it. I can't remember offhand, but whatever the heavy blaster rifle is. So anyway, opening up the box, we've got our instruction manual. We've got a big bag of parts, a little bag of parts, a loose torso, and we've got our white sheet of plastic with the uh, printed pauldron piece, and that does indeed look pretty much exactly like the Death Trooper. Just uh, obviously orange instead of black. So LEGO Team Builder C is saying you have a new LEGO carousel. Curious to hear what your thoughts are on that. Or if anyone else has gotten any new LEGO sets recently that they want to talk about in the chat. A uh, whole bunch just became available recently with the Summer Wave. So I'm sure there's lots of uh, new sets to go around. So as usual, the head comes in a separate plastic bag within the main bag. Hey there, Dylan. Yes, there will be giveaways. Um, we'll be throwing up that link in a little bit. So here is the Stormtrooper head. Uh, to me, it looks like it captures it pretty perfectly. Um, you know, all the way down to the little uh, details, little printing on the side there and on the back. And this is actually uh, molded, so it's uh, inset a little bit there. So very nice detailing. Um, Looks like the eyes are printed. Uh, you know, I guess the lenses on the eyes. It's not like a second color. So I guess you might have to worry about that wearing out over time. But overall, I think that's going to be a huge deal. All right, and I guess we'll uh, get started here. See if uh, how much this set departs from any of the other buildable figure builds that we've gotten recently. I'm guessing it's going to be uh, not too exciting. Honestly, it looks like the most interesting part is going to be the blaster. But I will allow Lego to prove me wrong on that one. We'll admit there is some interesting stuff going on on the back here with this these uh, two three-module Technic beams. So I'll have to see what that's about. Looks like there's going to be some sort of connection point up there. Maybe just to kind of fill in the back a little bit, which is always appreciated. 
I like, uh, I would like it. It would be kind of cool if the Lego designers came up with uh, new ways to fill that in. Not that the all the ways they have currently are bad or anything, but just uh, it's uh, nice to see them not resting on their laurels, so to speak. Nothing too exciting with the legs so far. We'll see if they do anything to fill in the backs specifically. I do see some 1x4 arches, so I'm guessing we're going to be uh, using those as we've done on several other sets. Dylan looks like you went on uh, quite the shopping spree today with the new sets coming out. You know, in addition to, to Star Wars buildable figures, I know there are some other Star Wars sets. There are some more Lego Batman movie sets. So lots of cool things coming out. All right, so our stormtrooper can now stand. He has the uh, shin armor piece in white. No printing on that. Uh, so that's not a new piece. We had it in the First Order Stormtrooper. We had it in Clone Commander Cody. So nothing new or exciting there. But I believe that this uh, newer armor piece that we got with the Rogue One sets, I believe this is the first time we're getting it in white. So that's nice to get a recolor there. Um, first part that is really jumped out at me as um, interesting or exciting. I guess we're starting to fill in the back with some uh, three module armor shells here. They've done this on a couple of different sets so nothing too new there but it is nice to see them coming up with ways to fill in the back and so then we've got a classic CCBS armor piece there so back is looking uh, pretty full um, you know, these armor shells do a pretty good job of covering 75% uh, of the legs, and it's only the inside that uh, ends up looking a little ugly there. And now it looks like we're building the uh, classic thermal detonator. This has appeared on a bunch of other sets, uh, trooper sets. So I believe the First Order Stormtrooper has it. Um, the Death Trooper has it, maybe the uh, Scarif uh, Shore Trooper. Oh, oh, that goes like there. And that attaches onto this little uh, Technic beam we put onto the torso piece. So nothing too exciting. Um, I don't think the one module Technic beams in white are a new piece, so that's a little boring. So we have now the torso armor. The piece itself is not new, but the printing uh, does appear to be new, modeled after the original, uh, you know, uh, classic Star Wars Stormtrooper, which is different from the First Order Stormtrooper. I do have that trooper handy, so we can see that there are indeed differences. Uh, it is not uh, the same by any means. Uh, so, you know, just a little bit of variation. Obviously, the designers want to stay accurate to the uh, the source material in both cases. All right, catching up with the chat. Do do do. Do we play Lego Dimensions, and are, am I excited for the new packs? Um, I did try playing Lego Dimensions for a little bit, but I kept having technical issues, uh, so that uh, kind of put me off on that. I would like to go back at some point. Uh, there have been some good packs that I have not picked up, 
but I want to get through all the level packs that I did buy initially uh, that I, before I buy any new ones. Alrighty. So it is having me build the hands separately. I'm wondering if there will be any difference between the two. It's not like this is going to be a very long build, so I will humor them and follow the instructions here. Got a four module CCBS shell in white there. Don't know if that's a recolor or not. We also have a five module. Actually, I know the four module is not because I can see it on that first order stormtrooper. And then we have a white pauldron piece. Also not new, but does pretty well to cover the arm there. And now it looks like it's going to be time for our plastic piece. So he does make use of these 1x3 black tiles with printing that are the same as on the Death Trooper, so they're reusing that part. And those, of course, we put a uh, one by one round of brick or round plate on the bottom of that, and then use a one by three plate there. Let me just pop this whole thing out of here. Do do do. And then that will stay on there pretty well. Not sure why they're having you do them one at a time. That seems a little silly. I guess it probably has something to do with the uh, the targeted age range. They want to make sure that the kids don't have too hard of a time building the set. Which figure am I more excited about? I wouldn't say either of the figures. Uh, am I excited about? Definitely the speeder bike excites me because it's the first uh, vehicle we've gotten in the buildable figure lineup. So I guess the reason we didn't build both arms at once is because of attaching the pauldron. Probably should remember that from the Death Trooper, but it has been a little bit since I built that. So, um, But basically, since you need to put the uh, plastic piece on these balls that are sticking out but over the other arm you need to have the other arm attached before you can uh, really build that there we go and then we pop the head on and get that on there so we don't worry about this popping out and we can show it off so there is the pauldron folds over pretty nicely looks uh, pretty good uh, kind of would like to be able to get this in a you know, different color. So we do have a black one from the Death Trooper. Uh, so you can have a black pauldron stormtrooper. But there also, I believe, are white ones in the cannon. Uh, so no sign of us, you know, getting any opportunity to get those at some point, unfortunately. So now we finish up the other arm. And then I think the uh, Stormtrooper is going to be pretty much done. Yep, so now the Stormtrooper is done, I believe. And now it's just uh, on to the blaster. So here he is. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Pretty basic build. He does have the friction joints on both his ankles and hips. So it uh, does make him a little harder to pose, and that will happen, uh, as I'm sure you guys are familiar with. Got to be very careful with posing some of those uh, friction extenders from the back. Looks pretty solid, thanks to the armor piece here and the 1x4 arches. 
Um, those Technic beams I mentioned at the very beginning look like they're going to be used so you can attach the blaster to his back. So that's a nice uh, thing that to, uh, to have on there, a nice little feature. We'll see how that works once we've built the blaster. Sorry guys that there was some confusion on the link to go to on the stream. I purposely don't... You know, I try to use YouTube to schedule the streams. Um, but then you know, there's an issue with actually, once I schedule it, starting it with my streaming software. Uh, so I purposely have stopped linking to the uh, link that YouTube puts out. So you're better off just going to... You know, youtube.com slash bz power there. So this is definitely one of the more interesting guns uh, that we've had in uh, a Star Wars build before. We've got a Technic beam on here, uh, longer axle on there. And I saw in the chat someone saying that the build looks like it's pretty similar to the First Order Stormtrooper. When uh, we're done, we can do a, a nice side-by-side -side comparison, I think, to uh, compare the two and see how the build's different. I have, I think, uh, all of the CCBS troopers that have been released thus far uh, waiting right off camera so we can uh, do some comparisons there. So there's the blaster coming along. We'll uh, be able to compare this to Cody's blaster, because I know his is fairly long, but that was also before we had uh, the uh, 1x4 launcher piece over here. We do have some black Borok eyes, so it's a nice little uh, bionicle touch there. We've got our extra ammo holder on the side. A little less accurate that way, but... Gotta put that somewhere. Okay, so this is interesting. They You purposely have uh, three extra pieces here. So you've got this uh, nice Technic piece there. You've got a 1x2 black tile and a 1x2 cheese grater slope. Um, so, then it looks like there are instructions on how to turn the Stormtrooper Commander into a regular Stormtrooper with a normal blaster. So it's not quite as easy as on the box, where it doesn't just convert. You actually have to take a part of the blaster and uh, rebuild it. So this is almost like uh, two sets in one. Uh, so let's show off what we've got currently, and then uh, maybe we'll rebuild the blaster and see how the new blaster looks. Alright, sorry, just looking at the chat real quick. So, uh, um, so we have, do have a couple of connection points here. I do like that in addition to the back one, we have a front one that is perpendicular to the rear one, so it should make for some uh, decent posing uh, when he tries to hold the blaster. 
So instead of on previous builds where he just kind of had to rest the other hand on the front barrel, he can actually hold it there. Uh, so that makes for some better pose in there. So he can uh, hold his blaster at the ready. Wonder if it would be easier if we can rotate this a little bit more. Can you hold it like that? There we go. So you can hold it kind of at the ready there. And uh, I think the blaster does a decent job of capturing the uh, heavy repeating blaster rifle that they show in the movie. Uh, for what it's worth, I mean, you know, they are a good bit restricted using this 1x4 launcher piece. So uh, I am noticing that if you don't pose it just right, the blaster itself actually bends. Um, so you got to watch out for that. And, uh, but otherwise, not too bad. I did notice that instead of, um, let me see, so we'll start doing our comparison. Instead of on most of the other uh, blasters where they use this Technic piece that has the axle uh, receptors, they actually use the newer piece that has t uh, you know, two axles perpendicular to each other with a Technic pinhole in between uh, for the triggering mechanism. So other than that, if we pop the blaster off, we'll compare him to our first order stormtrooper here and see how he stacks up. Pop off the storm first order blaster. So here we've got our two stormtroopers. First thing I'm noticing is that the stormtrooper commander is a good bit taller. Make sure you guys can, yeah, so, you know, the camera angle might look a little extreme, but it's uh, about, like, two modules taller or so. And I think a lot of that is because he's got the um, friction extenders in his ankles there, so that would definitely account for at least a module of that height difference. Other main differences, looking on the back, you can see that actually that um, thermal detonator design I mentioned previously, they used the two module long coupler on the first order stormtrooper and I believe BFA home you mentioned in the chat that this one uh, module technic beam is actually a new piece in white so uh, that would be why they didn't use it before and from the back I definitely like the stormtrooper commander better uh, thanks to these new armor shells covering the upper legs a lot better and the one by four beams are common these pieces are common we do have the uh, uh, little Technic bushing piece sticking out on the back there for the blaster. We didn't show off that feature yet. Um, the arms also appear to be longer on the first, on the Stormtrooper Commander, just by a module or so. And uh, that appears to be in the upper arm piece. They are a little uh, longer. You can tell that by the armor shells and what is revealed there. And of course, they've got black gloves versus white gloves. Um, so overall, uh, I think that they've definitely improved upon the design, you know, kind of the core design with the Stormtrooper Commander. And let's see how that uh, blaster holder fits on the back there. So that can just pops in there. It does turn, so you can put it at whatever angle you want. Um, so definitely think that this guy is an improvement uh, thanks to the new armor shells and just uh, you know some uh, overall height. Um, advantages there and uh, having the two-in-one set for the pauldron I, I definitely like him a little better plus you know I'm an old-school Star Wars fan so I like uh, the A New Hope uh, classic Star Wars over the First Order um, although you know definitely not saying that uh, The Force Awakens was a bad movie I enjoyed it so uh, continuing our comparison to a little newer of a set the Death Trooper so you guys should be able to see that those 1x3 tiles are identical and that the pauldron design is pretty much identical like the printing on it other than the orange and the black. Uh, otherwise the Death Trooper is taller. I think we talked about that a little bit on our Rogue One stream that that was actually part of the design is that you know these are supposed to be uh, the more elite units in the Empire so they made them uh, a bit taller. Um, and that kind of continues on to some of the arms and legs all being longer um, to kind of give him a, a lankier look 
And uh, on the back, the Death Trooper, of course, uses uh, the claws instead of the 1x4 uh, arches or curved slopes. So that kind of sets them apart. It's uses a little bit different design on the back for the thermal detonator um, from both the First Order Stormtrooper and the Stormtrooper Commander. So that sets him apart. And of course, he also has the blaster pistol in addition to the blaster rifle. But I think that kind of balances out when the Stormtrooper here has the, the longer uh, heavy blaster. All right, let me catch up on the chat a little bit and see if you guys had any questions. Make sure I cover that. So isn't this basically the Sand Trooper? Um, so in, because, as someone mentioned, you know, there's no, he doesn't have the backpack uh, that the Sand Troopers do, so he is not a Sand Trooper. Um, I believe that you only see the pauldron designating the commander in A New Hope on Tatooine. So uh, it would be a little confusing, but I know that they've, in the, the expanded universe, or Legends now, they went into that a lot more. But I do believe it is canon that uh, the different pauldron colors do indicate rank. So, like I said, there is, I believe, orange, black, and white at the very least. I would definitely like uh, to see if someone wanted to design a backpack that you could attach. And there, you know, there's already an attachment point for the repeating blaster, so it wouldn't be too hard to do that. All right, so let's see what else we got in here. Uh, Dylan, can you still enter the raffle? Uh, so we, the new member raffle, so we changed it a little bit ago. Our raffles are now available to all members, so there's no raffle specifically for new members there may be some wording somewhere on the site that still talks about it being a new member raffle but anyone can enter as long as you remember bz power so have at it uh how different are the helmets are we talking about the sets or in the star wars universe so between the stormtrooper and the the stormtrooper commander and first order stormtrooper they're definitely very different uh very big redesign there um, and of course, the Death Trooper has uh, quite a different helmet from the normal Stormtroopers as well. Continuing our comparisons a little bit, we have got the Scarif uh, Stormtrooper, or the Shore Trooper. So he is pretty much the exact same height as the Stormtrooper Commander. Um, looks like he uses a pretty similar design. Oh, I may have... May have put the uh, thermal detonator. No, I guess the thermal detonator is not upside down. Let me double check that real quick because I see on the Scarif Trooper it's a different way there. I'm pretty sure I got it right. Do, do, do. Yep, okay, so that's interesting. So that is a, a little discrepancy there. Pop off the blaster so you can see the backs better. Um, is that. And the Scarif Trooper also has this little doodad, which I'm sure was in the movie, but I don't know what it was for. Leg-wise, the legs appear to be constructed exactly the same, just with different colors. Uh, same thing with the arms. Again, just uh, different colors on the parts. So pretty much, these are the same builds. Just one uses their plastic piece up top, the other uses it around the waist. Um, some slight differences in the back of the torso, giving the Stormtrooper the uh, place to hold the blaster, and uh, he doesn't have whatever that thing is. And of course, the blaster designs are pretty different as well. Uh, you know, we've got the uh, Shore Trooper's blaster there with the kind of double barrel underneath versus the heavy uh, repeating blaster there. But pretty on par. And finally, going all the way back to the Clone Wars, we've got uh, Clone Commander Cody, who is apparently a little short to be a Stormtrooper. He's a couple modules shorter, probably about the same height as the First Order Stormtrooper. 
Um, and that would be mostly on account of not having the friction extenders on the hips. Uh, of course he uses the, uh, this was before the new armor piece, so he has some classic CCBS armor on the thighs, which makes from the back, he looks uh, a lot emptier on the back here. He doesn't have one by four arches, uh, the, those are empty. Uh, arms look uh, pretty similar, same length. Uh, obviously he has the orange pauldrons instead of the white, same armor there. And instead of having the classic uh, CCBS armor on the back, he has his backpack. So quite a bit different. Uh, I'd say the place where we can maybe compare them a little more is their guns. So we've got Cody's blaster versus the Stormtrooper one. So there are definitely some commonalities in design, having the two places to hold it, using the Balrock eye on the stock, uh, making use of these Technic pieces here. The big difference obviously is that the Stormtrooper Commanders uses the new kind of plastic shell to hold the 1x4 spring-loaded shooter. Uh, so I can definitely see why some people might see that as a disadvantage, um, having the spring-loaded blaster because it kind of takes away from maybe some of the accuracy they could achieve. But I think overall, he's a pretty solid set. I mean, he's pretty boring, right? Because he's, he's all white. But I do like how LEGO decided to try to kind of make him stand out a little bit more by giving us this plastic pauldron. And I think now what we're going to do is uh, take our extra pieces, put those off to the side. We're going to take apart the blaster and just uh, build the second blaster that they show us in the instructions. And just to take a quick look at how that stacks up. This might be a little tricky with uh, all these um, Technic axles going in here. I need to find my brick separator, which is behind all the troopers. Do -do -do. Love that design on the new brick, newer brick separator. This has been around for years now. But having the, uh, the little axle on the top there, so you can uh, stick it in and pop out any pesky Technic axles that uh, don't want to get removed. Even then, some of them don't want to cooperate. Come on. So this is already going to be, for me, a little bit of a criticism, I guess, on having this two-in-one model is that uh, in order to build the two different blasters, you have to take apart one, and that is not the, uh, the easiest thing to do. I guess that's kind of a testament to uh, the designers building the blaster. I will say that having this two-in-one look already has me thinking about getting a second copy of the set so I can have a normal stormtrooper with his blaster and the Stormtrooper Commander. Um, you know, if I wanted to be really crazy, could just get like 10 of them and have like a whole legion of Stormtroopers, but I'm not sure I'm ready to do that. Maybe I can do a fig barf at a LEGO convention of CCPS Stormtroopers. Come on, Axel. Would also have been nice, you know, I know this is not at all likely to happen, but if we had gotten the black two length axles instead of the red ones, we got them on K2SO, why couldn't we get them here too, Lego?
All right, so let's check out the Blast Tech E11 blaster rifle. So Stormfront, see you talking about how you feel that the uh, build for the Stormtrooper Commander is pretty similar to the Death Trooper. Uh, you might have missed we were doing a comparison before, and I'd say he's most similar to the uh, Scarif Stormtrooper or the Shore Trooper. Um, but he's still pretty similar to the Death Trooper as well. But if you're looking for close similarities, the Scarif Trooper is the one to look at. All right, so here is the Blast Tech E11 blaster rifle. So if I wanted to, and I guess I'll do that just to show it off, we can pop off the pauldron, and voila, we've got your normal run-of-the-mill stormtrooper, dime a dozen, dies in uh, one shot. And so here is his blaster rifle. Um, much simpler build. You can see we've got a lot of extra parts left over after doing that. One thing I'm kind of curious on is they have this exposed three length axle. I'm not sure if you're supposed to put the uh, extra ammo on there. I'm pretty sure we've done that on several other blasters uh, like that. So I can do that just for storage purposes. Or I guess you could use that to put it on his back. You know, I'm not sure if we've ever seen in the canon a case of a stormtrooper holding a blaster on their back like that. Uh, of course, we can then pop it in his hand there, and he is ready to miss every single shot he fires with this thing. Um, so, yep, there you go. I guess that uh, is about it for the uh, stormtrooper commander. Let me check the chat one last time for any questions. Alright, so no other comments on the Stormtrooper Commander. For now, we're going to leave him in normal Stormtrooper mode. Put his extra blaster parts off to the side here. Alright, and now on to our Scout Trooper. Actually, before I do this, I'm going to throw up the giveaway link. I forgot about that. And, uh... Give you guys a couple of minutes to enter if you have not yet entered already. And uh, while I let you guys do that, I'm going to open up the Scout Trooper box. Or I guess I'll show off the box first and then we'll open it up. And uh, once we open it up and look at what's inside, then we'll pick our first winner. All right, so we've got 75532, the Scout Trooper and Speeder Bike. I'm sure they had to work pretty closely with Lucas to make sure they got the uh, the spelling right there, because you can even see that it, both of those have uh, little trademark symbols next to them. So it's not, uh, Scout Trooper and Speeder Bike are not all one word. Um, they are separate words. So this set's gonna be selling for $55, um, making it the most expensive Star Wars buildable figure we've had to date. 
but also uh, far and away the largest when you consider the speeder bike as part of the set. Um, on the box art, we can see, you know, Ender in the background. We can see, I guess, that's probably Luke or Leia on their speeder bike. Uh, maybe we'll get uh, an Ender or Luke or Leia figure at some point to go along with it. On the back, we can see the Stormtrooper off, or the Scout Trooper off the speeder bike. He's got his tiny little blaster pistol. He's just a scout. After all, he doesn't need anything too big. You can see that the uh, pistol will go onto his leg there. Um, little uh, thigh holster. We've got some air brakes on the speeder bike. We've got, of course, our 1x4 spring-loaded launcher on the speeder bike. And uh, has a nice little stand for displays. And we can see that it is 42.5 centimeters long. So that's what, about uh, not quite a foot and a half. So maybe like 16 inches long. And he is 23.5 centimeters tall. So, uh, you know, about uh, nine inches tall, which seems to be pretty par for the course. I'm guessing he's going to be a uh, little bit um, shorter than uh, the Stormtrooper. But we'll see. Because uh, I do feel like they probably skimped a little bit on the construction for the Scout Trooper so they could put more pieces on the speeder bike. Anyway, I think it is time to pick a winner. So let's go and do that. All right, quite a few people entered, so good luck, everyone. Congratulations to Rekashell. You have won uh, 75111 Darth Vader, so probably one of the premier Star Wars buildable figures. Uh, of course, one of the most iconic characters in Star Wars. It's a great set, and uh, so you should be having getting an email uh, from me with all the details on what you have to do to uh, get that. Uh, pretty simple, just need your name and mailing address. So congratulations, Rekka. And I think with that, we will start building the Scout Trooper. He says, and then proceeds to not open the Scout Trooper. Sorry, just checking the chat. I do agree, BFA Home. I know you've said it before, and you'll continue to say it until LEGO listens to you, that a uh, B1 battle droid on a staff would be an awesome set like this. Of course, it would be another big brown vehicle, but it would still be pretty awesome. Star Wars is not known for having a, uh, it's a varied color palette. So we've got three bags. They're actually numbered, uh, which is, I think, a first for construction sets that I've seen in a, a good long while. Uh, we've got the Scout Trooper's head in a separate bag. We've got these nice two city, I guess actually, they're uh, more like ship masts that we're using for the speeder bike. And then we have actually have uh, two fairly large instruction books for this. So this is really impressive. Uh, how thick those are for only a $55 set. And then we do have a sticker sheet. So there appear to be uh, seven stickers going on here. So uh, mainly some control panel details. Looks like the air brakes on the back and then some details on the front of the speeder bike as well. All right. So, since we only need to open one bag at a time, that's nice and convenient. Oh, BFA Home, thanks for the correction that there were uh, blue and gray staps in uh, in the Clone Wars. You know, when I think Stap, I think uh, Phantom Menace, where of course they were brown, but later on they came in other colors. Alright, so it looks like bag one builds the Scout Trooper, bag two and three do the speeder bike. I need his head. Where'd the head go?
So since we're popping that out of the bag, we'll show off the Scout Trooper head. Looks uh, just as detailed as the Stormtrooper one did. Very accurate. No complaints on the molding there. I don't think I have had any complaints on the molding of any um, of the Star Wars buildable figure helmets, helmet heads. Uh, you know, obviously some of the people heads uh, sometimes leave a little to be desired. But I think they have been doing much better on those as time has gone on. am hoping and uh, you know because the scout trooper if you saw on the box he does have some like belt pouches so I'm looking forward to seeing how they build those on there and uh, in general just kind of uh, any kind of different build we get for uh, the set So question asked in the chat, where do I get these trays? I actually get them at Bed Bath & Beyond um, in the uh, kitchen organization section. So they have all sorts of trays there. They have one similar to this, like same kind of design, but uh, in a couple of different sizes. I find this size works really well for, uh, for these things, uh, for holding Lego pieces, sorting them both for when you're building sets or if you're sorting for a... Uh, a draft like some of the ones we've hosted on BZ Power, or if um, you're just sorting through your collection to try to be a little bit more organized. So already some uh, interesting Technic builds on the back of the Scout Trooper there. And now we're moving on to the legs. sure I'm using the right piece there. So it's interesting they are going back to that design where they use uh, this Technic piece on the back of the legs, and normally we would see that on the back of the upper leg. Here we're putting it on the back of the lower leg. And they use that in a few of the first wave Star Wars buildable figures to help kind of fill in the backs of the legs. And also gives an attachment point uh, so you can holster a gun on the hip, like uh, on Django Fett, I know, makes use of that. So I think one of the first wild departures from a lot of the other buildable figures uh, we've seen is that he uses these uh, six module long CCBS shells with, uh, let me find the part, with this new kind of attachment piece. So we saw this on Baze Malbus and Chirrut Imwe from the Rogue One uh, sets. On the back, it's got a couple 318 bars on there, and that will just uh, pop on to the shell. And then that becomes his lower leg armor. So it has a kind of similar look to the uh, new piece they molded specifically for Star Wars, um, but it sets it apart a little bit. If I had to guess, part of the reason for them doing that might be uh, so that it doesn't block the connection points on this Technic piece. The 
go. Now despite kind of the departure in construction on the lower legs, the upper legs still use the uh, this newer piece um, in black, not a new color, three, at least three, three or four, maybe just three, I think of the Rogue One sets included this in black, uh, K2, the Death Trooper, and Jin, um, possibly others that I'm forgetting. So nothing exciting there, but uh, you know, always good to get some more of that. Does the giveaway include the UK? Yes, anyone, anywhere can enter the giveaway. So we're building those little um, pouches using just a two by two curve slope, a one by two plate with bars and a pneumatic T. And those just pop into the uh, hole on the uh, armor there. Pretty simple connection. Oh, and then it looks like there's going to be some a uh, little bit more advanced connections going on uh, for the, um, I guess, hip or waist pockets. Alright, so now we get to add on the torso armor, not a new mold, but another new printing design. So you can see compared to the st normal Stormtrooper, I uh, got a lot more printing on the chest there and just a different pattern overall, um, but otherwise nothing too special. And then uh, these just fold around there to kind of give him a little bit different bulkier shape. So here are the arms. Nothing too exciting from a build perspective. We've got a five module black shell, a four module black shell, the same white armor piece that we had on the knees, and then a white pauldron, which as we talked about with the stormtrooper is not a new color. This is now, I guess, the fourth set. We've gotten it in, in that color that I know of offhand. But he's looking pretty good from the front there. Turn around on the back, not so good just yet. We are adding a couple of these three module CCBS shells to help fill in a little bit there. That's always a good start. And now this actually looks like a pretty interesting uh, technique here. So we have this classic CCBS uh, armor shell from Hero Factory and Bionicle. We're putting two 
black ice cream cone pieces into there. Like so. And that then gives us enough clearance that we can put another white pauldron piece on top of that. And that goes on the back here. And that emulates that little bump that is on the back of the scout trooper's armor, which uh, is definitely a thing in the movie. Only thing, my comment is that it leaves it looking really empty from up here, whereas in the movie I believe it's kind of just a continuous white uh, section there. I'm not sure how they could have fixed that without a new mold, um, but, you know, definitely something uh, to comment on a little bit. And the head goes on, and then we've got the scout trooper. So, doing a quick comparison to our stormtrooper. As I suspected, he is a little bit shorter, just one module or so. Uh, likely due to the fact that he does not have any friction extenders on the ankles. Um, uh, otherwise, the, the build is a good bit different on the lower legs. Not just the lack of friction extenders, but different armor pieces on the front. And then uh, has, instead of the 1x4s here, he's got these Technic pieces, which does leave the lower parts of his lower legs a little empty. Um... Not sure what they could have done within the Lego standards to uh, to fill that up, but maybe you know you guys on your own could use a one by two white um, curve slope there and a Technic uh, half pin and put that just kind of underneath there to give it a little bit more rounding down. Um, up top on the torso, there's a good bit of difference here because he's got all this Technic construction for the pouches. Uh, he does still have that thermal detonator, though, um, and uh, the arms, pretty standard, nothing too exciting there. I do think we still have to build a blaster, though. Alright, so here we've got tiny little blaster. Nothing too exciting. Let me grab my Death Trooper for a sec so we can compare to his blaster. So clearly, two different models of blaster based on the builds. They have two different ways they connect as well. The uh, Death Trooper uses this pneumatic connector with a Technic. Uh, axle hold to connect onto his leg armor up top at the hip. Whereas on the scout trooper, he's got this uh, ankle holster there. So it can attach down at the lower ankle. And that's uh, likely so that while he's riding the speeder bike, he is more easily able to reach it. All right, so that is our scout trooper, and of course, he can also hold it uh, in his hand as well. It's a little holdout pistol. It's not going to do much, um, but, you know, against the Ewoks, um, one would think it would be fine, but we all know how that turned out for the Empire. So now, um, we'll show him off a little bit more. I'm going to do another giveaway, and then we'll do our last giveaway of the evening once we're done with the speeder bike. So I've just put up the giveaway link again. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Checking for questions. So yeah, I, I like uh, the look of the Scout Trooper from the front. I think he looks pretty good. Um, I like that they kind of differentiated him a little bit with the leg armor there, uh, kind of different design. Has the color scheme down pat, right, because the scout troopers uh, don't need as much armor as the normal stormtroopers since they're not going to be on the front lines fighting. So um, it looks pretty accurate to on screen, as you know, accurate as they can with CCBS. Um, little bump on the back is nice from most angles except from directly up top, which could be a problem when he's on the speeder bike. We'll find that out in a little bit. 
but all in all, not uh, a bad little build. So we'll put that back in his holster, because he's going to need his hands free when we build him a speeder bike to uh, ride around on. And I guess we can pick our winner. Let me dump these extra pieces, and we will go ahead and do that. Alright, let's see who our next winner is. Ido4258, you have won a first order stormtrooper. So congratulations, Ido. Uh, you'll be getting an email from us with what you need to do uh, to get that prize. Uh, so I see in the chat, Dylan, uh, asking about uh, duplicate entries. We do filter those out so you cannot enter multiple times. All right, so now on to the second bag. Building the good stuff. So lots and lots of Technic parts, as expected. you get all the pieces out of the bags before you throw those away. So I see people in the chat talking about uh, biggest CCBS set and things like that. Um, forget exactly the wording I used before, but I believe this is the largest Star Wars CCBS set to date. Um, it might be the largest uh, set that uses the CCBS system. I'm not 100% on that. Um, but, you know, that would obviously include Hero Factory and uh, Bionicle Generation 2. Uh, and I, know st I don't remember how big Stormer's Dropship was. I never picked up that set, so I'm not sure how that would compare to this one. Um, but that was a pretty big set. And, of course, if you go back, you know, when I say CCBS, I mean specifically the CCBS system um, and not just construction in general. Because if we went back that far, uh, you know, or if we include all of construction, that would include Bonacle Gen 1, which obviously has some much larger vehicles that would blow this thing out of the water. Interesting to know that the uh, dropship was only 300 pieces. Definitely seemed like a cool set at the time, but never got around to picking it up. But I do hope that this set sells well, so I'm going to encourage all you guys to go out and buy it so that uh, we get more vehicles from uh, LEGO. So our first interesting piece to me, I mean, this isn't a new Technic piece by any means, but this may be the first time we're getting it in uh, reddish brown. So that's always cool to get some nice recolors there. And 
And so it looks um, exactly like a speeder bike right now, right? Uh, we'll get there, I think. We're already at the stage where we're adding the uh, spring-loaded launcher. And I believe this is a new color for 2017. A red four-length Technic axle. Boo hiss. Boo hiss. I mean, it is nice getting the Technic axle in more colors, but I'm just afraid that that is heralding the end of, you know, normal black color Technic axles which uh, is just going to make builds like this, this mu that much more ugly when you have all this red sticking out in it. Actually, line everything up here before we push through the two length axles. Interestingly enough, we have a couple of white Technic half beams. Seem a little out of place in the speeder bike. We'll see if those kind of get hidden down inside somewhere. Yes, Topai, I too remember the days when uh, the two length axles did not have little notches. I think uh, switching to that design uh, with the notches was definitely an improvement because uh, it does, as you mentioned, make them easier to get out. But I probably still have a uh, a baggie full of them somewhere. So it looks like we're making some sort of a uh, trigger mechanism here to launch our spring-loaded launcher. So you can see that going on there. The designers definitely have fun with that kind of stuff. Make sure it matches. And so BFA Home, see so you talking about how the uh, two length axle or the sorry the different colored axles are there either where they can't be seen or sets for younger kids and yeah no that's definitely the reason um you know it makes it easier for kids to follow the instructions to find the right part if it's a different color um you know in a lot of these instruction manuals you'll see they have this kind of one-to-one -one chart at the bottom so you can line up the piece and make sure you have the right size um and you know i think from a usability perspective, it is easier to not have to do that, just to have different colors. Uh, so I can definitely understand why they do that from that perspective. But of course, for us adult fans, not even necessarily adult fans, just for us more experienced builders, you know, it becomes a bit of a pain.
So it looks like the stand for the speeder bike is more or less permanently attached because this is definitely looking like it's going to be the stand. Um, we'll discuss our thoughts on that when we get to that stage in the build. When it's uh, you know, a little closer to being done. Like that. Hey, it almost stands. All right, there we go. Now I'm wondering if uh, this little piece, Technic piece sticking out here is gonna be for the extra ammo. That would be kind of interesting putting that on the base. Oh no, Scout Trooper overboard. All right, now it's time for our second piece in brown. Kind of comment on that because, you know, most people, myself included, kind of associate brown uh, as the color of the speeder bike. And we're almost, we're halfway through the first instruction book and we're on our second brown piece. Lots of Technic pins though. I see someone in the chat saying uh, they wish we had a First Order Stormtrooper with a baton. That would have been a nice accessory to add, but I think probably when they were designing the sets they had no idea that uh, that scene and that particular First Order Stormtrooper was going to be uh, so popular. 
Uh, so kind of hard to predict that they needed the baton and shield to recreate uh, Finn's fight scene. Someone asked me to say pizza to prove it's live. So there you go. Pizza, pizza, pizza. And do, 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 someone asking if I have experience with a Motorola Droid 2. Not sure why you're asking that, but I'm pretty sure I used a Droid 2 uh, what, about seven, six, seven years ago. And where is the music directory for it? I don't know. I, I One of the first things I would do on a new Android phone is I get a program called ES File Explorer, and then I can just kind of search and browse through the Droid's file system uh, to find whatever files they're hiding in there. So I see you guys talking about, uh, or suggesting it would be cool to have a kind of mini build of the First Order Stormtrooper Baton. I don't think we'll see that, considering uh, it's been you know a while now since The Force Awakens came out, so it's kind of that ship has sailed, um, as cool as that would be. does seem like the kind of thing where if you were really that interested in seeing it happen, you know, you could, of course, oh, wrong way, uh, of course, build one yourself. Saw someone else suggesting they would like to see a flame trooper. That could be pretty cool. Where is this attaching? Oh, right on there. So I agree a flame trooper would be pretty cool. Uh, I would say if they appear in The Last Jedi, then maybe we would have a shot at seeing one. There we go. I was wondering what was going on with this hose. I just had to twist it to the right angle. So now we've got, like I guess, the start of an engine with uh, some piping going on there. And we're falling off on the back here. Come on, Technic Tubing. I think whatever troopers we see in The Last Jedi are uh, what we're likely to see for buildable figures in the near future. Come on. Technic tubing is sometimes a pretty big pain in getting it to stay where it belongs. Did I get it? All right, I think I got it finally. That was more effort than one would have expected. Oh, now I could do it again. Come on, Technic Tubing. 
One would think at this point Lego would have uh, found a way to design the Technic tubing to make it easier to attach to the Technic pins. If there is a part that needs redesigning, that one should be on the list. Come on. There we go. More Technic tubing. This looks to be the last piece in this bag, at least, though. Hopefully the last piece in the set. Fingers crossed. Alright, now it looks like we get to make the uh, veins for the front. I'm going to assume, hopefully not incorrectly, that they are going to be symmetric. And looking at them, it looks like that's going to be a pretty safe bet. Uh, skip ahead a little. Do. -do, -do. Yeah, we'll go with that. Hey guys, if you can stop uh, posting about the uh, leaks for the last Jedi sets, it would be appreciated. I know there are people who do not want to be spoiled about any of that kind of stuff. People keep doing that. Might have to block some people from the chat for a little bit. Just want to keep it fun for everyone. So now we're getting some more brown pieces, some nice brown Technic panels, some three length Technic beams. the start of a uh, front um, I don't know what do you would even call it like a stabilizer all right I was gonna do both of those at the same time oops but I am noticing that it would have been a little bit of difference, so it's probably for the best I didn't do that.
Looks like we're finally getting to our first sticker. Going on this Technic panel here. Got my handy dandy X-Acto knife to help me line this up. Not too hard to apply there. So Prethan talking about uh, the Thor Ragnarok sets that got revealed today. You're asking what I meant by, uh, or what we meant by the globally comment for the release date. So right now, as of June 1st, you'll be able to buy those Thor Ragnarok sets in most places. So like most of Europe and Asia, um, South America, Australia, I assume. Um, but in North America, we're going to have to wait until August 1st to see those sets on store shelves. Definitely not the first time LEGO has done something like that, where they've released sets in one part of the world uh, a good bit before the other parts. Just uh, unfortunate that this is for a big movie that I'm sure a lot of people are excited for and want the sets for. Of course, you know, we're just as equally upset when it happened to Bionicle. Um, not going to forget that, of course. Alright, so we're starting to get some uh, body shaping there on the speeder bike. There's the pieces. So I guess going back to Thor, what do you guys think of those Thor Ragnarok sets? Personally, while I'm definitely excited for the movie, um, as someone mentioned, you know, you don't have the context for uh, the sets yet. At least the arena battle we've seen in the trailers, um, but you know, for the uh, other set, the f like final attack on Asgard or s whatever it was, uh, you know, it's really just kind of hard to know what that's going to mean for the movie. And honestly, the Commodore ship there didn't really excite me all that much. The Fenris Wolf I thought was pretty cool. Um, but the ship not so much, and the uh, the arena set wasn't very exciting either, personally. Um, I love the new Thor and Hulk figs. I, I love the Bruce Banner figs. I think the figs are great, but the set designs themselves um, didn't really impress me that much. I don't know, uh, Dylan L, you say there is such a thing as growing out of Duplo. Uh, my friend Danny would probably disagree with you there. 
I know we haven't done a great job of uh, doing LEGO convention coverage as of late, but he uh, does a thing called the Duplo Ball Run, and it's kind of like a, almost like a Rube Goldberg uh, machine for moving Duplo balls along, and people of all ages love it. Uh, usually a pretty, pretty cool thing to see at a LEGO convention. Um, and you know he's had some people of all ages help him with that. So I supposed to push in this red axle? Yes. See, so yeah, basically, no such thing as uh, growing out of uh, Duplo or Lego at all. Or there's no age that you're too old for, I guess, is the better way to put it. All right, we're starting to get a speeder bike here. So, it's uh, quite a solid build. I can hold it from over here, and uh, it's not falling apart, even though there's still a good bit to be built on it. So that's always a good sign. Time for another sticker. Oh, what do I think of the old fishing store? So I haven't had time to look at it too, too closely. Um, but from what I've seen, it looks like it's going to be a really cool set to build. You know, the, the subject matter doesn't necessarily excite me. Um, but, I th you know, just in general, I love a... a cool, fun Lego build. What I'm saying is I probably will pick that up at some point, and uh, we'll probably do a stream of it. Uh-oh. Popped out that... Ha, uh, supposed to go like that. There we go. So we've got uh, some pretty nice uh, kind of curves going on here. Putting these pieces at an angle uh, help kind of make it nice and rounded. So pretty nice designs there. I think we're getting pretty close to being done with bag two. Yeah, so I also see you guys talking about the uh, Saturn V set. That one I'm definitely excited for. Definitely going to get that one, and we'll definitely do a live stream for that. Uh, big Space Junkie, as a kid, still love the Apollo program. So uh, definitely looking forward to that set. Very excited.
Uh, BFA home nice uh, XKCD reference there with the upgoer 5. Hey Ido, congratulations. No problem. Glad you could join us today on the stream and uh, hope you have fun with the First Order Stormtrooper set. Looks like these are the handlebars. So just figure out where we're connecting them. Alrighty. Gotcha. There we go. And that is it for the first instruction manual. So at the end, got a nice ad for the two sets. Kind of funny that they advertise the set that you just bought. And then we have also have an ad for the new Freemaker Adventure sets. So the Arrowhead, and I forget what that one's called. This look interesting, I need to catch up on the Freemaker Adventures. Uh, Lego Life, new thing Lego is doing that they're trying to push real hard, kind of a social network for kids uh, to share their Lego creations. And advertising the Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens video game, which has been out for a bit. And finally, on the back, some of the other sets in this summer wave. So in addition to the Freemaker Adventures, we've got the Darth Vader Transformation, the Quad Jumper, the Bounty Hunter set, which I'm excited for, the Clone Turbo Tank, also pretty cool, Wrath Tar Escape, and uh, First Order Troop Transport, which does have the uh, the shield and the baton. So they did uh, kind of make up for n that. Um, also like that it has the uh, the flame trooper in that one. So those are minifigs, of course. Um, don't expect that we'll get uh, construction figures for those. for the last bag on our speeder bike. Of course, still pretty Technic heavy here. We do still have four more stickers to apply. Picking up right where we left off and finishing up the handlebars. So these will allow, with the uh, blue friction pin axle combos, allow the scout trooper to hold on to the handlebars. Always a very important thing to do.
So I see you guys talking about the uh, that bounty hunter set. Definitely a cool one. S pretty excited that we're finally getting Forlom. Um, also disappointed like some of you guys that we're not getting Zuckus. That is definitely one of the reasons I need to catch up on the uh, Freemaker Adventures, just to see just how uh, those guys fit in to the show. You know, it's not canon or anything, but I'm still curious. interesting kind of build we're doing here very technic heavy does have some system embellishments I'm not quite sure to what end just yet I agree, IG-88 probably would make a pretty cool buildable figure. I don't know how likely it is we would see him though. As far as uh, droids, that would be good adaptations. He would probably be a good one. A UCS Home 1. I would take pretty much any Home 1 set I think at this point, even if it was like micro scale. I know we did get like the hangar bay, probably longer ago than I want to remember, but an exterior model for sure. I mean, I guess pretty much, you know, we've gotten, what, like two dozen Star Wars buildable figures, and how many uh, Star Wars action figures have there been over the years, so we've got a lot of catching up to do, and I think most of us could make an argument for any character that has appeared in at least an, an action figure for Star Wars to appear in a buildable figure. Obviously, they kind of tend to skew more towards, you know, figures or characters who like do on-screen fighting and have play features and stuff like that. Um, more so than like a background character from the Moss Eisley Cantina. But, uh, I think, uh, you know, Hammerhead uh, would still make a cool figure.
Oh, and it wasn't BFA Home who brought up the fact that we need uh, some Rebels buildable figures again. But definitely agreed. Sabine, the Inquisitor, you know, uh, Zeb. I think they could do a pretty good Zeb. Still not sure what quite it is that I'm building just yet. I'm also still holding out for when we're going to get uh, some CCBS Astromechs. You know, R2-D2, Chopper. BB-8, I think, would be uh, maybe a little too difficult uh, without some new molds. But still, that would have been pretty cool to have gotten... Uh, that Poe Dameron buildable figure last year and have it include uh, BB-8. Missed opportunity, Lego. Alright, time to figure out. Looks like this is, I guess, an engine? Question mark. Pops back here. No, gotta lock it in place. There we go. And now, this part that we had from way back when, I'm going to finally push the axle through there. And lock that in. And now I guess, hopefully connect some of these hoses that have been hanging out. So that's kind of cool. We got the hoses coming in on this side, and they come out over there. Now, I didn't point out that we have the seven length Technic axles in yellow now. Um, forget if we had those last year or in the past, but we're getting them now, that's for sure. Uh, so I see my astromech talk started uh, some conversation about just smaller scale in general buildable figures. And yeah, I think that would be really good for the price point too, having something more protector size, as you guys mentioned. So not just astromechs, but we could do a pit droid, you could do Jawas, Yoda, of course, would be a, a big win they could have there. Back to the set though, we've now got some engines. to do but yes definitely down for some smaller scale ones kind of you know as a, a gateway for uh, people who might not be ready to spend $25 on the stormtrooper commander but you know they'd spend 10 or 15 on R2-D2 or Yoda especially since some of those smaller characters are so iconic
speeder bike is starting to get in the way of me finding the right pieces. What a jerk speeder bike. So I don't think this is a recolor. Pretty sure we got it in one of the Rogue One CCBS sets. We got this nice little new Technic piece in dark brown. Don't remember which set it came in. Probably Cheer It in the uh, his light bow thing. Or maybe somewhere in Bays. Now we're just kind of building some additional paneling onto the back of the speeder bike to help make it look more solid. Oh no, I see we want a Force Ghost set. I think that might be a little, little much to ask for. But yeah, dig up those uh, Chima buildable figures. I'm pretty sure they had some nice uh, trans light blue in a lot of those. Could be on your way. Getting closer to the end of the stickers. One more down on this Technic panel here. go. So we've kind of got an air brake here. Covers up the engine in the back and then I guess as it opens to let out more thrust that's how they turn it. All right, well now we're starting to get that kind of angled taper on the back uh, with some Technic panels there. I think it's looking pretty good and solid. Now the talk in the chat has gone all over the place for construction stuff. Going back to Hero Factory, I was a big fan of Invasion from Below. I thought it did a good job of kind of setting itself apart from uh, Bionicle. You know, 
Hero Factory did always kind of have a little bit of a feeling like it was just Bionicle without the name. Um, obviously, the figures are always a little more, more futuristic and everything, but they still kind of, you know, were basically, you know, buildable action figures in a kind of sci-fi fantasy setting. Um, but the invasion from below, you know, that was different since they were like the minifigs that pawned the mechs. And I would have loved to see that idea kind of continue with uh, Bionicle or with Contraction uh, while Bionicle Gen 2 is around or even now that it's gone again. So now we've started to get the foot support on one side here. Looks like we're just basically doing the entire left side, and then we'll do the right side. Oh, there's also uh, some comments in the chat about wanting to see Marvel or other superheroes contraction again. I'm not sure that we'll uh, ever see that because I'm pretty sure the um, you know the first time we got it, it did not sell very well at all. And you know, I feel like that probably had a lot to do with the uh, design of. This sets more than the fact that it was uh, superhero themed. Not quite sure where the, some of those design decisions came from. Cause some of those sets were pretty weird. I would like to see them do another take on it, maybe, you know, Try to go a little more realistic, like Marvel Cinematic Universe kind of style. You know, Star Lord CCBS figure would have been pretty cool. They could have given him his uh, face mask helmet thing on, so they didn't have to make a Peter Quill face. But I guess Marvel did not want to do that. There were definitely some good colors in those uh, hero f or sorry superhero sets. I remember picking up some, and I'm not even sure if I ever actually built them; just uh, bought them for the parts. air break and we'll have one sticker left Now I see the discussion has turned to a 
girl themed uh, construction theme like friends or elves I think that could be interesting but I'm not sure if the market would support that necessarily as in do girls want you know action figures you could market them more as dolls but they don't quite have the realism of a doll so it kind of you know has that uncanny valley that I'm not sure most uh, of the target demographic would really like sure there's plenty of girls and guys both who would like the sets but question as always is enough to support you know its own theme Finishing up the back here. I think uh, about all we've got left is up here, and then we've got some tan pieces. That I'm not sure what we're doing with just yet. to our last sticker. So far do I think this set is worth almost sixty dollars um so far I would say probably yes I mean if you're a Star Wars fan um, that would definitely be the big caveat you gotta already like Star Wars that looks like the tan is for a little bit of a seat it definitely look, looks like it's gonna make a cool display model and it has some action features definitely some good playability um, but we'll take a look at that all in a moment. I was correct that the little Technic uh, piece on the base is for storing the extra ammo. So we got that. And... Looks like I am done. Alrighty, so let's get the instructions out of the way here. Get the extra pieces out of the way. And I'm going to throw up the giveaway link. We do have one more fig to give away. So I'll put that up there. And we will show off the Scout Trooper and Speeder Bike. And then we'll uh, do our last giveaway. Alright, so, before we put the Scout Trooper on, let's just take a look at the speeder bike in its entirety. As we mentioned early on in the build, the stand is permanently attached. Um, let's see. Looks like it's connected 
by at least three double Technic pins that go between both of these supports, plus this fuel intake piece is connected to it. Uh, so, in order to remove the stand, uh, you'd need two four-length black Technic beams. I guess they could be any color, dark gray, light gray, that would blend in pretty well. And then you should be okay. Uh, actually, it would have to be one four-length and one six-length on this side. Um, but you could do it. And then, uh, but then, the the problem with that is, uh, you know, the these things, the kind of footrests, uh, throttle maybe uh, in the in the universe, aren't very supportive. So you would not be able to to balance it or to sit it down uh, very easily. So I think from a display and playability perspective, they needed to make this permanently attached um, in order to make it sturdy enough, and it also acts as a handle for kids to hold uh, while they're playing with it. And right here we have a little bit of a trigger mechanism for this uh, stud or uh, spring-loaded launcher. So let's see how that works. So it's a pretty sensitive trigger there. Um, reload that and try it again. So does not have much pull on it. Um, but it works well, and you know, I'm definitely a fan of the 1x4 spring-loaded launcher versus flick-fire missiles. I'd say um, it is nice and easily concealed, right? If you don't have the the ammo piece in it, you're probably not even going to notice that it's there. Um, in the universe, you know, in Star Wars, there is a blaster uh, that goes under here, so it is pretty accurate as far as its location. So I'm not going to complain about any of that. Um, you know, and I would rather have a, an easy access trigger for playability than like having to kind of stick my finger uh, in there somewhere. Uh, so that's the main play feature on this. Um, the fins, the stabilizers at the top, and these ones are solid, but these ones do move around a little bit. Um, I'm not sure if they're supposed to, like in universe, uh, but it does move. I'm not a huge fan of having the exposed. Technic axles right there. Um, would have liked it if there had been like just a, just a half bushing put on it, or even scooch these forward uh, just a little bit. Uh, or instead of using this is the Technic half pin with a two length axle attached, just use the blue pin axle combo and shift these guys back a little bit. Um, is nice and sturdy, the, so I can hold it from the front here. There we go, hold it from the front, and you know, it's not really bending or bowing or anything, and it's it's staying together, so it's very sturdy, sturdily built. Uh, not gonna complain about that, so very nice there. Uh, let's see, what else we got here? On the back, we do have these flaps that open up, and you can see the engine underneath. So I guess kind of the idea is, uh, as the uh, rider pushes down on one pedal, like push it on this pedal, that's supposed to open up that flap, kind of in an in-universe setting. Uh, obviously, you know, this is uh, not a real vehicle, but that's kind of the idea. So that works well, and I do like the little engine detail back there. I think that looks pretty neat. Um, overall, I like the shaping of it. I think they do a pretty good job. I feel like if it was perfectly to scale, this might be a little longer. But I do understand that they're kind of working with the limitations of the already existing CCBS figure scale and uh, this boat mast piece that they're using for the stabilizers uh, was probably the best option to use. And yeah, maybe there are some things they could have done to, to make it a little uh, longer, but I'm not going to complain too much about it. Um, I do think they did a good job kind of filling in all of the gaps and everything. I mean, there's some like little stuff here or if you look on the bottom, like under here, but I don't think that's too big overall. I would say maybe the biggest detriment from gappiness is in the front here under this big uh, system cockpit piece. Um, I'm not sure how well it will show up on the camera, but you can pretty much see right through it. Um, you know, it's a little detracting, but not the end of the world. Uh, other things, so stickers. There were, I believe, seven or eight stickers on the model. I think if you're not a fan of stickers, you can pretty much leave them off. I mean, these ones don't do a whole lot. 
The ones on the flaps don't do a whole lot. The stabilizers up front, maybe a little bit. Um, if there is one you do put on, I would be this one on the 2x4 uh, tile here for the control panel. And I feel like the 2x4 brown tile is a common enough piece that you, know, you don't have to feel bad about stickering it as opposed to these Technic panels. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Okay, so now we'll test out how the scout trooper fits on it here. Should be a little interesting to get him kind of situated properly. The feet do attach to the uh, stabilizers here. Let's get the stormtrooper out of the way. But it's going to be a challenge, I feel, finding a way to pose him right. Alright, maybe not. Let's see. I feel like he should be hunched over a little more. But that is about as far forward as he's going to lean on this. Um, just because of uh, how these things move. So these, these are fixed, so the only part that moves is this little part up here. So you can only lean forward so much. Uh, so that's probably about the limit. Um, as far as the feet go, uh, it is kind of cool. He does have a little bit of posability there, so he can you know kind of make it look like he is... Uh, you know, hitting the, uh, the throttle or whatever it is to adjust the flaps back there. Um, and you can kind of give it a little more dynamic posing if you want. So there is that. So take a look at uh, him on there. Um, there is a little bit of a gap here. Maybe they could have tried to build up the seat a little bit. But I think it would have been difficult finding something like the, the proper size um, that would have kind of fit with the CCBS. I guess, oh, there we go. So now that was my bad. So he should probably be sitting a little further back there. So he's on this black Technic panel. And then that thing I was just complaining about pretty much goes away. Let's see if we can get him to lean more forward if you sit him, see him like that. There we go. Yeah, yeah, so if you scooch him a little further back on the speeder bike, you can get him to lean forward more, which I feel uh, looks a little bit more accurate to how uh, they they look in the movie as they're speeding along on the speeder bikes. You know, you want to kind of keep your head down so he doesn't get knocked off by a passing tree branch, and it does still leave clearance on the stand, so that's good. Yeah, so I think that is the speeder bike, so... Uh, someone asked, is it worth the $55? Um, and now that I've you know had a chance to put it all together, um, for my money, yes, I think it is worth the $55. Bucks. Um, I think the Scout Trooper is a pretty solid build. Uh, you know, a little more on the simple side compared to some we've gotten. Um, but I feel like no, he's probably more complicated uh, than the Storm Trooper because he has... The, uh, the pouches um, on here uh, is a little gappy on the back of his legs, but you know, you, you're not going to be able to be perfect with every little detail. Um, so yeah, he's a, he's a good build. I think the speeder bike is a solid build. Definitely looks good. I have to figure out somewhere where I can uh, display it now. Um, definitely think one of the, uh, you know, kind of crowning uh, sets currently in the uh, Star Wars buildable figure arena, um, right up there with you know Darth Vader and Grievous, uh, so certainly worthy of, of their company. Not maybe as iconic of a character, but I think hopefully every anyone who has seen Return of the Jedi remembers the speeder bike scene, so I think it is a pretty iconic scene, and uh, for a first vehicle of this kind of size, you know, I saw some people in the chat trying to figure out other ones that we could uh, like they could have made you know the stap was a suggestion but I feel like the the speeder bike is definitely more iconic than the stap um, also I have to keep in mind uh, you know who might buy this so 
talked about, you know, this is like uh, Return of the Jedi uh, is what, like a 35-year-old movie or so. Um, so, you know, the people who grew up with it now have more disposable income, so they would be more likely to spend $55 on a speeder bike set um, than a, a younger person who grew up with the prequels, or they would buy it for their kids, because at this point, uh, you know, that, that generation has uh, grown up and has kids, so they remember Return of the Jedi fondly, so they would buy a set like this for their kids. So uh, I think at this point we're going to pick our last winner, then I will catch up on the chat, see if there's anything else to answer, and uh, then we'll probably wrap it up for tonight. So our final winner is Aaron. Uh, you won 75117 Kylo Ren. So congratulations. Uh, should know the drill by now. So uh, just make sure we have your current address and we will send you that set uh, probably sometime next week. All right, so let me catch up on the chat now. Do to do. I'm not seeing a lot of questions here. BFA Home saying you grew up with the prequels are not exactly new. No, they are. Well, I guess at this point they're not the newest Star Wars. But you know, my point is that people, the people who grew up with them, uh, you know, are are not quite as old as the people who grew up with the original trilogy, and by a couple decades. Uh, let's see. All right, so yeah, I think uh, that's going to wrap it up for tonight. Thank you guys for tuning in. Just a reminder, we are doing another stream tomorrow uh, at 12.30 p.m. We're going to be building uh, the Brickheads. I'll be joined by Chelsea, who you guys might remember from some other streams we've done in the past. And uh, that should be a fun one. Uh, this this stream was kind of last minute since the sets showed up uh, at my doorstep yesterday. And so I figured, well, can't wait too long to build these guys. I was excited to, to wanting to build them, and I knew you guys would want to see them too. So hope you enjoyed it. Uh, appreciate all the feedback. Congratulations again to our winners, those being uh, Aaron, Ido, and Rekka. So congrats again, guys. And I think we will uh, see you all, hopefully, tomorrow, if not, at uh, the next stream.